Good morning, students, staff, community members, class of 2016, and Director Riverall. My name is Matthew Hamm, and welcome to my senior talk. I would like all of you to visualize this in a way that is comfortable. You can close your eyes or leave them open, whatever works best for you. I want you to picture a young boy walking down a path. And as he's walking down this path, he comes to a fork. At the fork, the boy sees before him two paths, a path to his left and a path to his right. The path to the left is filled with prejudice, injustice, and negative comments. While the path to the right is filled with simplicity, comfort, and no challenge. The boy chooses to take the path to the left and endures the negative comments, injustice, and prejudice. This was a story about myself joining a Boy Scout troop where I could feel different because of the appearance of my skin. I'd like to ask in the audience now if anyone's ever felt this way before, if you've ever felt that someone can notice something about you before they even know you, maybe you're that guy with long hair or that tall girl. And I'd like to ask in the audience if anyone's ever felt this way before. Thank you. Now that most of you get a gist of what I mean, I want you to put yourself in one of our shoes. Or maybe you've already experienced this before, a feeling of being different. I want you to think about that. And think about this. Think about how scared you must have felt, how out of place, how unwelcomed, Coming from my community, I had seen other colors, but to be surrounded by a vast majority, I felt as though, as, as though I was a foreigner. I decided to bring leadership to my community, regardless of race, gender, or income. I believe everyone should have the trait of being a leader. I decided to help restart my community's pack. Now, I mentioned before about a Boy Scout troop, and now I'm speaking about a pack. And I'm sure most of you are wondering just what the difference between a pack and a troop are. And I'm about to tell you that right now. There's an organization called the Boy Scouts of America. And in this organization, there are two distinct groups, a pack and a troop. Now, a pack consists of kids between the ages of 6 to 10 while a troop consists of kids between the ages of 11 to 18. For the sake of my experience, we're focusing on the PAC. Going back to PAC 15, when I first started working with the kids there, I realized that they only had three members. In order for a PAC to function properly, they need at least 10 members. I feared that I would be the one picking up their remains. And before even attempting to raise the number of scouts, I had to ask myself if I would be ready for this. I had to ask myself to gain the assurance that I could do this. And I came up with three distinct traits of myself. Upon reaching the highest rank in scouting, I myself have many leadership qualities. Second, I myself am a minority. Being a minority, I was able to connect with the kids on a level of friendliness and understanding. And third was economic background. Understanding where the kids came from as far as income struggles, I understood them on a level of that if they weren't able to afford to 
pay for scouting activities, that it would not be an issue. Realizing that I had the leadership quality and understanding the socioeconomic struggles that these kids had, I was able to assure myself, yes, I can take this on. And with that, I came up with four main goals. These four main goals included holding recruitment meetings once a week, becoming Den Chief of PAC-15, and spreading the word, and funding. My first goal, which was holding weekly meetings. The way I went about this was, when you're restarting a PAC, you first have to have a location where you can meet regularly. The way I went about this was going to schools and churches asking if I would be able to hold meetings there. How convenient it was for me that the location of choice was Choice View United Methodist Church, which is directly across the street from Gompers Preparatory Academy. Moving on to goal number two, becoming den chief. Becoming den chief meant that I would be in charge of the pack. Being in charge of the pack meant that I would have to go through rigorous paperwork, making sure all my I's were dotted, all my T's were crossed, while taking a month-long course known as YPT. YPT is Youth Protection Training. I was required to take this month-long course to work with younger kids for safety reasons, of course. Moving on to goal number three, which was spreading the word. The way I went about this was by working with GPA's Mr. Calagiari, I was able to print out enough flyers to pass out to local San Diego schools, such as Downtown City Tree Christian School, Holly Drive Leadership Academy, and Webster. Moving on to goal number four, which was funding. Funding was the hardest goal out of the four. Now, I understood that scouting was a costly activity. Understanding this, I realized from my experience that the way that Boy Scouts would normally sell popcorn was by, sorry, that they earned money was by selling popcorn. I remember from my experience of selling popcorn that it was not as easy as most of you would think it would be. I remember being in my troop and my colleagues would always ask me, Matthew, why do you always sell so much popcorn? Why do you always, just to give you guys a brief, this uniform is from many moons ago, so it's not going to fit me 100%. I remember always selling the most out of all of my colleagues. And they would always ask me why I always sold so much popcorn. And I always told them I enjoyed selling popcorn. I was a good salesman. I'm going to give you a brief example of how it was selling popcorn in my area and why it was so difficult to sell the popcorn. Just picture me in this uniform walking down southeast San Diego with a red wagon filled with popcorn. Let's watch it. Hello, sir. Would you like to help support the Boy Scouts of America? Well, I'd love to help support the Boy Scouts of America. Well, sir, today we're selling popcorn. Well, what kind do you have? Well, sir, here's a list of the popcorn we have. I think I'm going to go with Caramel Crunch. One box of Caramel Crunch coming right up, sir. What's the damage that I owe you? That'll be $20, sir. For one box? Yes, for one box. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Slam. How was I supposed to sell $20 per box of popcorn? in Southeast San Diego, City Heights. Ridiculous. Understanding the prices of what we were selling, we, we were able to come up with a different solution. Now at the time I had three members from the start, but I had raised the pack to six members. Now to register scouts, it costed a fee of $20 per scout. Now I'm gonna ask in the audience, does anyone know 20 times 6 on the top of their head? Anyone? 20 times 6. Say, what? 120. 120. Thank you. That's what I needed to come up with. We need to come up with $120. Realizing that it was difficult to sell in my area, 
we were able to work with the church that we were, that we were meeting with. And we were able to fundraise enough money to get these six scouts registered. Moving on, let me show you how scouting has given opportunity and leadership to our community through scouting. Enjoy. Troop 15, thank you God for Troop 15. Sound off, one five, sound off, one five, one more time, one five, Troop 15. Most definitely. Um, Troop 15 serves a uh, very diverse community. And so we see a lot of kids um, coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, but we really run the gamut. And the, and the boys have an opportunity to interact with. Um, uh, you, you have kids coming from very well-off areas, intermixing with kids that come from uh, very poor areas and very diverse backgrounds and it gives an opportunity for especially for youth in dis that come from disadvantaged backgrounds they have the opportunity to see the world to experience things that they would never have the opportunity to experience um, we take the boys skiing up in the snow and a lot of the boys that come in have never seen snow, have never had an opportunity to go skiing. They've, uh, and this opens up uh, new, new worlds for them, exposes them to things that they would never be exposed to. Uh, even, um, even though we live maybe uh, five, six, eight miles from the beach, a lot of the youth have never been to the beach. With uh, Boy Scouts and with Troop 15, they're able to experience the, uh, the beach and it sounds like a simple thing, but a lot of kids that grow up in the uh, um, southeast of San Diego, uh, many of them don't ever have the opportunity to go to the beach. They don't have the opportunity to go up in the mountains. They don't go out to the desert. They don't have, they live in a, a world that's, um, that is closed to all those opportunities. And, and Boy Scouts uh, uh, makes all that, um, exposes them to all of that and more and it's just it's a it's a wonderful program that allows them to experience life scouting um, is the core values of scouting are uh, youth leadership and leadership training and uh, almost everything that we do in scouting is geared towards giving youth the tools to become leaders in the community and um, and go forward. Uh, it's they. It's one of the few op organizations where youth have an opportunity to actually lead. Most of the time, they're at school or they're being told what to do. They have coaches telling them what to do. In Boy Scouts, it's boy led, and so you have a boy leader who's the senior patrol leader, and then you have patrol leaders who lead the. Uh, uh, patrols made up of maybe eight boys per patrol and that's um, everything in Boy Scouts is promoting boys to become strong leaders. Understanding that scouting brings opportunities to youth in my community that they would never be experienced to makes me proud to be a scout. Not only a scout, but to be a leader. With that being said, I have a short video I'd like to share with you on what a leader is and a good example of a leader. Please watch. Leadership is a choice. It is not a rank. I know many people at the senior most levels of organizations who are absolutely not leaders. They are authorities, and we do what they say because they have authority over us, but we would not follow them. And I know many people who are at the bottoms of organizations who have no authority, and they are absolutely leaders. And this is because they have chosen to look after the person to the left of them, and they have chosen to look after the person to the right of them. This is what a leader is. With that being said, I'm asking of all of you, 
to be a leader that others would follow. Regardless of where you come from, all of you have the potential to be leaders. My name is Matthew Hamm, and this concludes my senior talk.